This is the Married to Doctors podcast, episode number 78. We, we were talking about medical school really flipped my world upside down. I moved across the country. I went from the Mountain West to the Northeast. I went from open spaces to a very crowded city. Even the climate's different. I went from somewhere that was really dry to very humid. And all those changes and being newly married and having a spouse in the medical career and in the medical field was really, really hard. Welcome to the Married to Doctors podcast. Because we know that being married to a doctor isn't always as glamorous as it sounds, our podcast helps successful homes be happier. We're here to build community, hear your stories, and explore solutions with the experts. Here's your host, Laura McKeldry. Hey everyone, thanks for being here with the Married to Doctors podcast. I'm so excited that you found the show and that you're coming back every week. Please continue to share it and let's keep growing this community of supporting one another. I really believe in helping physician families be happier and healthier in their relationships and supporting those, especially the non-medical spouse, but of course the medical spouses too. I know there are many of you that listen and we're glad you're here. I have to give a shout out to Sarah. Sarah Wineland messaged me, don't know her other than she's a podcast listener. And she said, you know what? I support a couple of other podcasts and I was wondering if you had a page where I could support you. And I was thinking, you know, I've set up a few things, but I have not been consistent and I have not been good And when I think about this show, you know, it started as a passion project and then I'm like, oh, it's doing good enough. I really ought to monetize it some way. And so I've tried some sponsors or I've tried some different things, but I just really haven't found, you know, that magic sauce. And Sarah encouraged me to set up this page. So if you go to marriedtodoctors.com forward slash support, marriedtodoctors.com forward slash support you can learn how to support the show. And if I have enough of you doing that, I can worry less about sponsors. It can take care of the podcast editing needs. And I think it'll be awesome. So if you love the show, if you get value from the show, please consider doing that. It's marriedtodoctors.com forward slash support. And I will try to be consistent on just promoting that one spot where people can go. So Thank you, Sarah, and thank you to all of you who have left awesome reviews on the Apple Podcast website. Please continue to leave a review, share the show, and all of those things make such a difference. So this episode is going to be really sweet, and you may even need a Kleenex by the end of it. Susanna and her husband are both first-generation college graduates. They just went through the match, and Susanna's going to share with us what it's been like to live in a big city far from home. I hope that you'll enjoy this episode and that you'll know that I'm here to support all of you in your medical journeys and in your medical marriages. I wish you the best, and remember to choose love in your marriage today. Susanna Suarez, I'm so excited to have you here on the Married to Doctors podcast. I'm excited to be here. (laughs) Yay. Okay, so go ahead and just introduce yourself to us. Tell us a little bit about you. Okay, so my name is Susanna. Um, I'm 26 years old. So I was born and raised in Ogden, Utah. So I went to the University of Utah where I got my nursing degree. So I've been a nurse for three years now. Most of that time I've been a neonatal intensive care unit nurse. Um, And I just recently transitioned into a clinical research nurse coordinator at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. So I'm mostly working in neuromuscular diseases. And I've been on a couple of studies that have to do with boys who have Duchenne's muscular disease, which is a very fatal disease. So there is a need for research in that area. And so I've been a part of some like groundbreaking research. And it's been really great. I love what I do. I've been married for two and a half years, and um, my husband and I live in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and we don't have any kids. We have a fur baby. Okay. (laughs) All right. So tell us about this husband of yours and a little bit about your love story. Did you guys meet in Philadelphia or where'd you guys meet? Um, No. So we met in Utah. We're college sweethearts. 
So we met at the University of Utah. Um, we were part of a four-year program that was for students interested in the medical field um, and also came from underrepresented communities or they were first-generation college students. So my husband and I are both Mexican-American and we're both first-year generation college graduates. So we met through that program. Actually, the first and second year, we didn't really interact very much. Um, the first year, I maybe said one thing to him, and then that was it. <laughs> and then the second year, um, we had like a short conversation on the campus shuttle, and that was about it. Um, so then our third year, my friend, she got to know my husband a little bit through like a different class. and she one day invited me out to um, dinner with her and him. And so we went out to dinner and I was going to, I wanted to stay after a little bit to get some bubble tea. And she had to leave conveniently and um, my husband stayed behind and we had a great conversation. I don't really remember what we talked about, but it was just so, it wasn't very awkward. It was very comfortable. So we really hit it off after that and we hung out a couple more times and then we decided to start dating. So we dated for about three years and he then got into medical school. He got into Temple Medical School in Philadelphia. And so then we had talked about a little bit about marriage and he told me that he wanted to propose to me once he got into medical school. So he got into medical school, I was really excited, and then maybe two months after that, he proposed. And then a month after that, he went off to Philadelphia. And I stayed behind in Utah, so we did have a long year engagement that was long distance. And so I stayed behind to plan our wedding, and also I just had finished my like nursing degree. So I really wanted to do my first nursing job in Utah. I think if I would have moved, it would have been too many changes at once. I'm really glad I did that. And so then our wedding day was just so, so special. We were finally going to be together. And I really, I really like that we had that long distance engagement because we really decided, okay, we really want to be with each other. Yeah, that's awesome. I love that you're so positive about that year apart because it's easy for people to be like, oh, it was the worst year ever, but there is yeah. some benefit to it, you know, especially just like being young. And like you said, so many changes going on you starting your job as a nurse. And then that was his first year of medical school. So many changes for you guys, but that's awesome. Yeah. So you mentioned here too, that you guys are both first generation college students. What has this journey meant for your family? So my family, they've been very, very supportive. Both of our families are from uh, Michoacan, Mexico. So they didn't have an opportunity to go to college and so then they moved to the United States, really wanting that for their children to have an opportunity to pursue higher education. So they're super, super supportive. It has been really hard living away from them, but my parents have been through that already. So I only have one grandparent living now, but my grandparents stayed in Mexico. So my parents moved away from them and they had to figure out a way to they connected with their family, even though they lived so far away. And then also my parents come from really big families and they've had to live apart from their brothers and sisters as well. So they're no stranger to that. And especially my mom, I feel like she has been so helpful to me throughout this whole journey, especially the first year. I remember calling her and bawling, just wanting to go back home. And um, my mom, when she was 19 years old, she came from Mexico to the United States and she didn't know how to speak English, did not know how to drive and did not have a job. And then my, my dad also, he worked for the Union Pacific Railroad and throughout his career, he really didn't even work in Utah. He worked outside of Utah. So he would leave my mom by herself. So my mom really had to learn how to be independent and go outside of her comfort zone. So having my mom share those experiences with me has really helped me to be strong and just know like I come from a really strong woman and I know I can do this. And she's just been so, so great throughout this whole journey. Wow. That is such a sweet story. I love how you feel like you've been just strengthened because you're her daughter and everything that she's been through, you know, because I imagine that Philadelphia is not exactly like Ogden, Utah, 
right? No, <laughs> completely different. <laughs> right. So that is probably culture change and just yeah. the whole dynamics are different there. Tell us a little bit about medical school in general. Like, how's it been going? Like, has it been easier? Uh, you kind of just touched on some of the parts that were hard, but anything else to add yeah. to that? So let's see, medical school in general, it's been, I would say, very challenging and life-changing, but in a very positive way, even though I didn't see that at the beginning. Like we, we were talking about medical school really flipped my world upside down. I moved across the country. I went from the Mountain West to the Northeast. I went from open spaces to a very crowded city. Even the climate's different. I went from somewhere that was really dry to very humid and all those changes and being newly married and having a spouse in the medical career and in the medical field was really, really hard. But then at the same time, I wouldn't trade that experience for anything. I learned to be very independent. I've met some really, really great people. I'm lucky to be in the nursing field because it's mostly a career for women. So I've met some really incredible women, have made lifelong friendships. And I really appreciate this experience. And also I've, I've learned to really appreciate where I'm from as well. I love telling people that I'm from Utah and what it's like out there. So yeah, it's, it's been a really, really great experience. Yeah, sure. that, that's really neat. How's your husband been doing with medical school and all the changes? Because he had all the same changes too, right? Plus the stress of yeah. medical school. So how's he been doing? Right. So that first year, he, he did pretty well. So like I said, he, he went to Philadelphia by himself and didn't know anybody, didn't have family. And he seemed like he did pretty well. And then somewhere, I want to say like March, April, he got shingles. So then I was like, oh my gosh, he must be really stressed. And I was stressing out that he got shingles and he was all alone. And, but he is just, he's such a strong person. He, I don't know if maybe he is really stressed out, but he doesn't like show it. He's just such a strong person and he's, he's actually done pretty well. I think it hit him hard when I was dealing with moving and when he saw that I wasn't doing very well with adjustment, that kind of hurt him because he felt like, oh no, I did this. I should have gone to medical school in Utah. But then I had to like really sit him down and tell him, you know, even though this was really hard, I'm really glad that I did this and it's not your fault if I feel a certain way, you know, you have to go to school, you have to do all these things and it's not your fault. And I need to learn how to just be um, more independent and just a stronger person. Yeah. And it sounds like you have been, how did your schedules work out? Cause I know medical school can be demanding and then nursing. Did you have great nursing hours where you could kind of coordinate with his schedule or did you guys just like pass each other in the halls at the hospital? <laughs> um, so yeah, at the time I worked night shift, which can be really, really hard. I remember when he was in his third year and he did surgery, that was really, really hard. He would be gone um, by the time I came home from night shift and then I would leave to go to work and he still wouldn't be home. So we wouldn't actually see each other when we, when I would work and then when I didn't work, we would see each other for like a little second. He yeah. would kiss me good, goodbye and I'm like barely awake. And then when he'd come home, he would eat and just pass out on the, on the couch. So that was really, really hard having to deal with that. I remember I had like a big breakdown because he was finally done with surgery. So he was going to take the exam on like a Friday and he was going to have Saturday, Sunday and Monday off because it was like Labor Day. And I realized I worked that whole weekend. I worked Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday night, and I just bawled. But I mean, I just, I went to work and just said it is what it is. And oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's really hard, but just getting those feelings out and not bottling them up just mm -hmm. feels so much, you just feel so much better, even yeah. though you can't do anything about it. Yeah. Maybe you just needed a good cry, right? <laughs> yeah, I sure did. <laughs> right. Um, how are you guys feeling about the match process? Well, for me, I'm really excited and I'm his like number one fan. So I'm just like, I know it's going to be great. And 
things will will fall into place but he's really really anxious he is definitely a realist and he knows the possibility of not matching Mm -hmm. so he gets into his head sometimes and gets really really anxious and that's hard for me to watch because I I just want him to see that he's such a good person he's such a good doctor like I know he's going to be a good doctor and Mm -hmm. But there's so much that I can only say. Mm-hmm. I feel like he's always just going to have that anxiety up until it's finally match day. Yeah, I think the match is, is kind of stressful just because of the way that it is done. And the truth is, mm-hmm. every year there are some people that don't match, right? And so yeah. sometimes you're just like, well, I don't know how many people interviewed here. I don't know the order that anyone's putting me in. And so right. it's definitely kind of an anxious thing. So he's, is he doing emergency medicine? Is that right? Yes. Is that what he decided on? Okay. Yep. So that's exciting. And any place you guys like really want to go or really don't want to go? What do you think? <laughs> I really want to go to the west side of the country for sure. Um, I'm done with the East Coast. Okay. Um, he did like some interviews in California, which would be great. He did Colorado, Utah, and Arizona, which are places that I would really, really love. Okay. Um, somewhere that I wouldn't want. New York City. Okay. Has he did interviewed have an interview there? there. <laughs> yeah. And, and you're like, please put it on the bottom of no. the list, right? <laughs> right, right. That's on the bottom of my list for sure. And speaking of the list, like, how are you guys coming together? Like, how much does it matter where you want to put things versus where he wants to put things? Like, how do you guys communicate about that? So, yeah, I sat down with my husband and I told him, but I wanted him to pick the program that speaks to him, the program that he feels like is going to shape him as a as the doctor that he wants to be. And I don't want him to think about location. I told him, you know, at the beginning, I didn't really like Philadelphia, and it was really hard for me to adjust, but I eventually got there. I adjusted, I made new friends, and I made Philadelphia my home. So I feel like even though I am very honest with him and I tell him the places that I don't want to be at, if it ends up being that we're one of those places, I'm sure that I can do it and I can adjust because mm-hmm. I just feel like I've done it once and I can do it again. Oh, well, good for you. You've got it. such a great attitude. I love it. Um, <laughs> have you guys always been on the same page with um, emergency medicine? Were you fine with that choice? Did you have any influence on that choice? So yeah, I, I've been good with that choice. The two that he's, um, specialties that he's considered was um, emergency medicine and also anesthesiology. And um, for me, it didn't really, it didn't really matter to me. I just wanted him to pick the, the specialty that he liked the most. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's good. I know some couples, they, I don't know. I hear stories about couples being like, no, 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 you're not. Right. <laughs> How would right. you feel if he had said surgery? Oh my gosh. I think I would have had a, like a little mini heart attack that <laughs> the first time <laughs> the, that surgery rotation was really, really rough. And no. I mean, I, I think you're so amazing to be married to a surgeon because it is hard. It is so hard. Yeah. Mm, I always laugh because I'm like, like, how was, because I was asking you earlier, like, how was medical school? And sure enough, you brought up surgery as being the hardest. I find that over and over again, people are like, oh, (laughs) surgery rotations. I'm like, oh my gosh, you did a rotation. Try doing a residency, right? Like, (laughs) Right, right. So rough. Crazy. And I know a lot of spouses feel very strongly about what what they pick. And, you know, I had my feeling, I've talked about myself enough on the show, but it, it is interesting to like work through that, I think, as a couple. And I think emergency medicine will be an awesome choice. So that's exciting. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited. Um, so what have you done for your own self-identity? I mean, you've kept your nursing going strong. It sounds mm-hmm. like you're, you're killing it at work. So that's awesome. <laughs> Anything yeah. else that you're doing to kind of like help with your own self-identity with, with the move to Philadelphia? I think making my own friends really, really helped me to feel like I was a part of where I lived instead of just being there when he's gone or, um, you know, he's not available, I go out with friends and we have a good time. So that's really helped me with my self, my own self identity. And we're also, um, most of my friends that I've made are nurses. So we have like that commonality and it's nice to just talk to other nurses and, and be around them. Other things that I've done are, I go to the gym a lot. Um, 
I feel like that keeps me strong emotionally and physically and I love doing that and um, also having a dog has really made me feel a part of the community because he he allows me to go outside we go out and walk to the dog park and it's fun to like have a conversation with other dog owners and um, being outside in the park and being around other dogs it just made me feel like I'm I'm part of the community not just there Oh, that's awesome. All right. So any advice you want to leave for anyone listening, any of our pre-med students, early in the medical school journey students um, and their partners, anything that you would um, give to them as far as advice goes? Um, Yeah. So I would definitely say take care of yourself first. Focus on what you can change instead of what you can't. Because I feel like if you make positive changes in your life, you're better able to deal with the things that you can't change. So yeah, at the beginning I was a night shift nurse and working nights was really hard. It was really hard on my body. Um, I was physically and emotionally drained. So then when the, the opportunity came up to work regular hours, I took it even though um, NICU nursing was something that I've done and I only knew. And making that change to clinical research was a little bit scary, but I just knew that I needed to do this for my own well-being. So when I made the change after that, um, it was, it was just such a positive change. And now I'm like more able to deal with things that I can't control. So I feel like if you take care of yourself, it's easy to minimize that resentment that you might have and maximize the connection that you have with your partner. For sure. And then also I want to recommend books. So the one that's constantly uh, recommended on your podcast is How to Improve Your Marriage Without Talking About It. That one's so great. I read that whole book. I'm in the middle of rereading it and taking notes and it's just such a great book. And I feel like that one changes uh, marriages in a very, very positive way. And then also Love in the Time of Medical School by Sarah Epstein. She was actually on your podcast, and that's a great book. Um, I would strongly recommend that for people who are right at the beginning. I'm kind of sad that I I didn't find that book until like third year, so I really wish I would have found that a lot earlier because it has some great, great resources for sure. Well, that is so awesome, and I love, I think my favorite line was when you said, if you'll take care of yourself, you can minimize resentment and maximize connection. That is really important, you know, because that's what we really want to do to have a successful marriage is, you know, keep the resentment low and the connection high. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, That's awesome. Well, this has been so fun to talk to you and you'll have to keep us posted on where you go with the match. I'm I'm excited. excited. (laughs) Yeah. I may have to check back in with you and see where you ended up. So yeah, that will be great. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you, Susanna. This has been a great conversation. I appreciate you so much. All right. Thank you so much, Laura. Okay, Susanna, it's Monday after match. How are you? Pretty good. (laughs) Oh, good. I'm so glad. We got on the call and I was like, don't tell me anything. I want to hear it all fresh (laughs) on the podcast. (laughs) Okay, so was match day everything you hoped it would be? It, It was. It was a complete shock, though. I mean, you always hope and dream that you're going to get your number one, which was California, but we ended up getting Denver, Colorado which is so much better. It was a complete shock. It wasn't even on our radar. Um, like I said, we were just thinking and talking about California. and But this was just a really great surprise. I'm so, so happy. Yeah, Denver's going to be nice, I think. I mean, everybody yeah. wants to live in Denver, it seems like. Right, right. It's such a competitive program. It's emergency medicine, and everybody wants to live there. And since we didn't put it as number one, we were thinking – you know, other people are going to put that as number one. Like there's just no chance that we'd ever get Denver and we did. So I'm really excited. (laughs) Yeah, that's awesome. Congratulations. So you also told me you wrote this sweet little letter to your husband. Yeah. Do you want to share anything about that with us? Um, So I actually have the whole letter if you want me to read the whole thing. Oh, that'd be a sweet way to end this podcast. Okay. Okay. Well, we will end the podcast with your love letter. All right, so um, 1,395 days ago, I started to dream about this day. 
365 days ago, I put this date down on a countdown and watched the days go down. Halfway there, 99 more days, 60 days, 30 days, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Match day is finally here. My excitement has been building up for this day to say the least, but for you, it has been a different story. Up until this past Monday, you have been anxious and terrified within your own mind, asking yourself, will today be the day I'm stopped on my path to becoming a doctor? There were step one, step two, residency interviews, and ranking residency programs that all made you so anxious and afraid that any wrong move, your future could be put to a stop. My heart would break to watch your facial expression and body language go from calm and relaxed to worried and anxious. I would think to myself, oh no, he is thinking about the possibility of failing again. All I could do in those moments were to be supportive and patient. It was hard seeing you that way. I wish you could see yourself through my eyes instead of yours. So let me tell you what I saw every day these past three years and eight months. I saw a hardworking, intelligent man who was resilient. I would question, how do people work 24 hours straight? But you did it, making it look easy. Sure, you would come home tired, but behind the exhausted eyes, struggling to stay open, I saw a man truly meant to be a doctor. As you told me stories about what you were experiencing, I heard more than just content. I heard in your voice allowing me to see a kind and compassionate man who wasn't just there to learn about complex medical cases, but a man that truly cared about serving the underserved inner city community of Philadelphia. Not only did I see your passion for medicine as a whole, but residents and attendings that you worked with took note of that passion too. Your evaluations had positive comments on your work ethic, critical thinking skills, and communication skills with coworkers and patients. As you read those evaluations to me while I made dinner, there was still some amount of anxiety. I saw it on your face that you had doubts in what the evaluation said. But at that moment, I also saw a man that was humble, who still knew he had a lot to learn. You did not let positive reviews make you arrogant. You continued to make yourself better. From undergrad to now, I have been blessed to see the man I love grow into a soon-to-be emergency medicine resident. Today on your special day, open your eyes and see all that you are. Open that letter and know that you are here because of your hard work, your intellect, your resiliency, your compassion, and your passion for medicine. I am beyond proud of you and so lucky to experience all the ups and downs of this journey with you. I promise to continue to hold your hand tight and continue to see the amazing man that you are through this new journey. I love you. Oh, that's so sweet. And I would say he's very, very lucky to have you, Susanna. Oh, thanks so much. (laughs) All right, you guys. Thanks for listening to another great episode of the Married to Doctors podcast. And thanks again, Susanna. Thank you so much, Laura. All right. I told you guys that was really sweet at the end. Um, When she first read that to me, I was like, oh my goodness, Susanna. (laughs) Really tender moments. I think we have something really special on this show. And I'm so grateful for everyone who is vulnerable enough to come on and to share their story. So thank you so much again, Susanna. And if you find value in this podcast and you're glad that it exists, please consider a donation at marriedtodoctors.com forward slash support married to doctors.com forward slash support. Thank you so much. Have a great week. Thank you for joining us on this episode of the married to doctors podcast. Our mission is to make successful homes happier to learn more or to share your story. Visit our website at married to doctors.com.